What's up, everybody? Yes, we're back in Dragon's Dogma today and checking out some of the unique weapons that you can find. If you purchase the Dark Arisen version of the game, there will be a number of unique weapons sold at the Black Cat. It's a shop in Grand Soren that provides numerous uses. Due to how weapon progression works in this game, there's usually one single weapon in Bitter Black Isle that stands above the rest for each weapon type. But those can take a while to get, and in the early game, you may be wanting something more than your basic equipment. These weapons at the Black Cat are not cheap. No, not at all. But if you save up enough gold to buy them, are they worth it? Well, I tested eight of them, and here are the results. We're starting off with one of the most powerful items in the game, the Force Hatchet. It's a sword usable by fighters, assassins, and mystic knights. As you attack a foe, it will build up a sort of electric charge around the Arisen. Your strength or physical attack power is nearly doubled and you can deal a lot of damage. At the max stacks of 10, you have the highest bonus damage. However, being hit at 10 stacks will reduce your stamina to zero. Being out of stamina leaves you very vulnerable and it can take a while to gain that back. But what's interesting is if you use this as an assassin, you can use the bow and still get the damage bonus. As long as you build up the field with a few melee hits, you can back up and let the arrows fly. Considering bows are already so strong with different skills and blast arrows, you melt enemies. This effect also stacks with Conqueror's Periet, meaning you could get this plus an additional four stacks of super strength. The stamina loss is extremely annoying, but if you're able to be careful and just switch to a bow after charging it up, you might see a huge change in your combat prowess. This weapon is extremely strong and probably the best non-DLC weapon if used correctly. If you hate flying enemies, then the Griffin Bane is perfect for you. It's a short bow usable by striders and assassins. It's extremely light and deals more damage to griffins and any other flying enemy. Dragons are unaffected by this, but when you're facing harpies, gargoyles, bats, succubi, and sirens, your physical and magical bow damage are doubled which makes it extremely effective against enemies in the air. Now, this might not sound like a big deal to you, as there are numerous bows that are easy to get and still deal nice damage, but flying enemies can be a pain. Being able to take these enemies down quickly is a powerful option, and the bow is stylish as well. Of course, you would think the main reason to use this is for griffins. Besides one instance, these beasts love to swoop in and fly away. And you'd be right, as this really is perfect for such an enemy. The small downside is that you really don't fight griffins all that often. They could swoop down throughout the main region of the game and collect food, but I've only ever seen three do this total. I wish they did it more often just because it's an interesting enemy to fight. Regardless, the Griffin Bane is the biggest bane for griffins, and it will work wonders against those other pesky air dwellers. A much cheaper option from the Black Cat is the Saurian Bane Daggers. They have the shape of Saurian heads on the hilts and have this wicked looking curved blade. As you could probably imagine, they're really strong against Saurians. Striders, Assassins, Magic Archers, and Rangers can all use these and when paired with powerful magic attacks, they perform well. I tried these with no upgrades for them and with no skills. I got some nice results still. Saurians were the one enemy I found early on that took no damage unless I used ice. Of course, with more damage from leveling and higher tier weapons, this isn't the case anymore. But these daggers seem to take down the scaly lizards in much fewer hits than I expected. The only problem here is that Saurians really aren't a huge threat. You can often avoid fighting them altogether. But it just so happens that the Everfall and Bitter Black Isle contain much larger Saurians that don't die in a couple of hits. I imagine these could be very useful in those areas where you know for a fact that you're going to find them. Also, they're one of the coolest looking weapons I have found in the entire game, which does give them a leg up. For the best experience, try them out on Magic Archer, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. One of the creepiest shields I've seen is the Zombie Bane, a very interesting design that will make you perfect for slaying the undead. It's a magic shield, so only usable by Mystic Knights. I tested it against a variety of enemies, and turns out it doesn't do anything against skeletons. Kind of a bummer there, but whites, liches, eliminators, undead zombies, and cursed dragons are its perfect foe. Actually, it's said to be good against death as well, which is kind of neat. The one big thing is that this shield is useless unless you upgrade it. I have it at a 1 star here, and it can't block anything, because the harder enemies in Bitter Black Isle are just too strong. 
I even threw on some augments to block better, but it still won't reflect damage back. So if you want to use it, you need to increase its stats at a blacksmith. From what I read, this shield has the ability to outperform every other magic shield when used against a susceptible foe. I also had no idea that eliminators were undead. I never really thought about it because they usually just stomp my face in and make me rage. But I guess this shield could prove very effective for taking them down once you've leveled it. As for basic enemies, it doesn't make much of a difference because undead are extremely easy to defeat, especially in the main island area. But for some of the bigger undead that have chunky health, this might be a nice option. The Militant Dove is a magic archer bow that I used during my first playthrough of the game. One of the only items I bought for the Black Cat that time around, and it's a pretty useful thing to have. Sporting a very magical look, the bow will heal you when you're not moving. You can't be aiming the bow, walking, or anything. Complete stillness is required. But it doesn't just heal up to the white bar, it heals your full health, making it a potion saver. The damage is not exceptional once you get further into the game, but it works well early on, and with enough levels, can still take down tough opponents. But the healing is really what makes it special. It isn't particularly heavy, so maybe you could keep it in your inventory to heal you up after battles. Heck, store it on your pawn and pull it out to fully restore yourself. Sadly, the bow does make you take more damage from hits while it's equipped, so using it as your main weapon could get you in a lot of trouble. Overall, it's just an okay item. If you have enough gold, potions may just be easier and faster to deal with, but it's a cool option and pretty nice early on. The Repeller Bow is a short bow able to be used in either the Assassin or Strider vocation. It sports a unique look and is said to be crafted from the hide of a divine creature. If you attack foes that don't notice you, the weapon will sap their health. This means that any enemy who doesn't know you're there can be hit by an arrow and you will restore your health. This green bubbly effect comes over your character and will heal all of your white health, which means it doesn't fully restore you, but I was able to attack while the effect was active. This makes the bow pretty bad if you're in the middle of combat. It's best used when you're equipped with bow skills that provide zoomed in effects like a sniper shot. Now, the actual healing effect is a bit odd at times. Hitting basic enemies works to trigger it almost every time, hitting a monster with low damage doesn't work, and hitting tiny beasts like rabbits returns very minute amounts of health. Again, this only heals white health, so it won't be usable all the time. But, since you can usually disengage from combat in this game, the bow can be nice for recovering from hardcore combat without wasting resources. While this is a very cool idea and neat looking weapon, it doesn't come into play all that often. If you're playing with pawns, the effect only heals you, so it's still better to have at least one mage to heal the party. And then it doesn't really get used because you'll be topped off from the mage. But if venturing forth alone as an assassin, this could be pretty big. Consider that stealth and sniping fits perfect for an assassin, and it works to create a capable build for you. This elegant weapon is called Royal Alms. It's a very shiny mace usable by the Mystic Knight vocation. When attacking an enemy, the user will gain 5 gold coins for every hit dealt. So every time you hit an enemy, you get 5 gold coins, straight into your pocket. Not a large amount, but a pretty neat idea. If used with skills that hit multiple times, this grants 5 gold per each hit, gaining up to 30 coins in some cases. Enemies do not need to be defeated for this, as the hits themselves grant gold, which allows you to fight something you can't damage well and still rack up gold for a while. Some monsters like Chimeras can still grant coin even after they're dead by hitting their body. The two NPCs in the DLC are unkillable, meaning you can hit them over and over with this to rack up a fair bit of coin. Also, the weapon looks cool. Problem is, it's useless. If playing in hardcore, your basic goblin drops 10,000 gold 90% of the time. It's actually crazy how easy gold is to get in hard mode. Now, in normal, it's nowhere near that much, but just selling weapons can be way more effective than this Royal Alms. Think of it as a nifty bonus because 5 gold really isn't going to change your life, even if you're using it constantly. They really should have upped the amount of gold a bit to make this worth buying. Finally, we come to my favorite weapon from the Black Cat, Cyclops Bane. This massive bony hammer can only be wielded by a warrior, and it doubles your attack power against Cyclops, Golems, and Ogres. Since you will be fighting Cyclops as often, it tends to come in handy, and the damage bonus is very noticeable. When using skills such as Arc of Deliverance, you could take chunks of health out of these behemoths. And again, this weapon is unupgraded. You can give this to your pawn and have them be the monster slayer, or just beat these one-eyed freaks to death yourself. 
Chimeras, unfortunately, don't give you any extra damage, but when fighting the right enemy, this weapon feels like the perfect hammer. It clearly has some cut tusks and Cyclops teeth on it as well, making me think we're bashing foes with a Cyclops skull. If used correctly, this weapon does outclass all other Warhammers against these foes, making it a very nice item to have. The best is when you knock one of these guys down and get a nice skill attack right on the eye. It's also fun to one-shot the baby Cyclops in the Waterfall Cave. Yes, Warrior is extremely fun because of the massive hits that he can do, and Cyclops Bane makes you feel like the perfect monster hunter. And there you have it, 8 unique weapons from Dragon's Dogma. You might be wondering why did you even make this if there are better weapons in the DLC? Because these weapons, if used in the right situations, grant you huge damage boosts. On my first time through the game, I only used the Militant Bow, and since it makes you take more damage, it's probably the worst one. All the others could grant you a ton of fun and allow you to take down enemies at a much more efficient pace. Plus, you don't get that many cool looking weapons from the world itself, so being able to buy such unique items is awesome. Check out the Force Hatchet if anything else. I saw that it is possible to kill death in one go if you use that, a good bow, and some blast arrows. Dragon's Dogma isn't about being the perfect RPG. It's about giving you the best possible power fantasy and making you feel like a powerhouse. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, a like would be awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.